Hello everyone, Michael O'Brien here, and today I wanted to do another Q&A, answering some of your guys' questions that you have left on some of my videos. Before I do so, I just wanted to thank all of you so much for continuing to comment and to ask questions, and even if you just come into the comment section just to say hello and say, oh wow, this was a really cool video, I really liked this video, I liked the thing that you talked about in this video, whatever. I read all of these comments, right? I'm not just, you know, uploading these videos and just throwing it to the side and, okay, I'm going to go upload some more videos now, so maybe I'll go look and see, like, if anyone left any comments. No, every time you guys leave a comment, I get an alert and I go and read it and I try my best to respond to it. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be responding to some of your guys' questions. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, first up, we have Noah with a really good question. Uh, let me go ahead and read out your question, Noah. It says, hey, Michael, great video. I completely agree that presentation is more important than knowing the most difficult slides. I am always interested in learning fun new slides, but struggle with incorporating them into routines for laymen. I tend to stick with the basics, classic pass, double lift, mercury, and focus more on the presentation aspect of things Sometimes I watch these other magicians do insane slights on social media and I am envious. But then during performance, I realize most of us feel the same way. Presentation is greater than slight difficult for laymen. Okay. First of all, let me address that. And then there's a second part to the question. I completely agree. Um, for me, it's, it's not so much about learning a difficult slight and trying to stuff it into a performance but it's more about learning the slight that is best going to suit the specific situation. So maybe the diagonal palm shift is a really difficult slight that you learned and you want to use it in this routine that you're putting together, but maybe there's another slight that works out better for you. Maybe it's better to just do a double undercut and then palm the card off the top. Maybe it's better to do a pass. Maybe it's better to do a double lift or a top change, right? Maybe there is some other move that is going to work out better in that situation. Yeah, you don't get to show off your diagonal palm shift, but to be 100% honest with you, the only people that really care about that are magicians. So if you're performing for a magician, throw your hardest stuff in there to try to impress them, right? But if you're performing for a lay audience, you definitely want to focus on your presentation. You don't need to do the hardest, most complicated thing. In fact, the easier the move is for you to execute, the better it's going to be because it's going to look effortless. It's not going to look like you're trying to lift a ton of bricks and turn it over. It's going to look like you did absolutely nothing at all, which is what you want when you're doing magic. Have you ever had a spectator say, oh, that looks easy? That is the best compliment you can get as a magician. It should look effortless. It should look like you didn't do anything. It should really look like you just stuck the card in the middle of the deck, waved your fingers, snapped, and turned it over, and now the card is on the top of the deck. That's what it should look like. It shouldn't look like you put the card in the deck, did this weird thing where you're rubbing the cards, here, and then snap, and now the card's on the top, right? Because the spectator might not know what you did, but they know that you did something. So part two, when showing a magician a trick, what do you tend to show? I tend to get performance anxiety when showing magicians tricks because I feel like they just want to watch them and become uninterested. Number one, you only need to worry about this if you are performing primarily like, you know, for magicians. If you're primarily a public entertainer, you go out and you do events and you perform magic for, you know, just lay audiences. Honestly, stick to that and just keep doing what you got, what you want to do. Keep doing what you love doing and magicians will appreciate watching your performance because they will see the passion that you put behind it, right? Now, what you can also do is create a routine that is specifically designed to fool or to uh, impress other magicians, right? Oftentimes, like I said before, doing kind of harder, more complicated looking slights is something that tends to, you know, impress magicians more. Um, but also fooling magicians can be a lot of fun because as magicians, you know, we know a lot of the like the little moves and stuff. So this is one of the reasons why I came up with my tour de force performance. I wanted to come up with something super clean uh, that magic that layman would appreciate, but also that, you know, could fool some magicians too. 
So there's almost no moves. The card just goes into the deck. It's squared up. I cut the cards. I turn half face up. I do the Pharaoh shuffle. I do the, the, the display where I show face up cards and a face down. I hand the deck to the spectator. They square it. I take the cards back. I show that the cards are all mixed up, snap, and then spread them. And now all the cards are facing the same way except for one, their chosen card. Magicians really appreciate this triumph because it's different it's fooling like they don't see the moves happen they don't know when uh, i did the correction in the deck or maybe if they do they really like that display that i use right if you guys are not quite sure what i'm talking about i'm talking about tour de force my in the hands triumph shameless plug go check out my tutorials playlist because i put the entire tutorial there for you guys to watch just one dollar a month if you want to become a member you can check it out but yes so that's a perfect example of a routine that I, you know, when I put this routine out, I was thinking like, oh, I think magicians are really gonna like this too. But my honest truth is you don't need to worry about fooling magicians. You don't need to worry about focusing on being like a magician's performer. Just do what you're already doing. Focus on performing for layman. Focus on being the best performer you can be. And magicians will love your presentation. They'll love your passion and they'll love your magic just as well as if you were to, you know, put all of your effort into trying to trick the magicians or, uh, you know, trying to be a magician's magician. All right, next up, I wanted to share a question from Kevin Early, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look. He says, ah, another question, he, he, he. Kevin's asked a lot of questions so far, great questions. By the way, go check out the Q&A uh, question board. Um, it's going to be a picture of like a chalkboard that says Q&A on it. Go check out that uh, that little comment section, whatever you want to call it. People are asking a lot of great questions in there, and I'm answering the questions on the keyboard as well. So make sure you guys go check that out. Uh, and if you want, you can leave a, a comment and all that stuff. That's on the community tab right here at O'Brien Magic. Go check it out. All right, so Kevin Early says another great question, or another question. A lot of words here, but the question is short. <laughs> I'm not going to read the whole paragraph. I'm just going to read the question part. I really found value in your insight about continuity or theme running through your act to give a reason for the effect. I put this idea to the test when I'm considering what tricks to include in my act. Uh, he goes on to talk about his chop cup routine that he's built. And he wanted to know how exactly do you um, build this chop cup routine up and, and all this stuff. So um, for me, there's a couple ways that you can do this. You can have a line that runs through that routine that kind of ties everything together. Like maybe if you're doing a chop cup routine um, with uh, like a, a margarita shaker and um, instead of using balls, you're using little like little lemon slices, right? And uh, I'm sure you guys have seen this video online where the magician does this and he's like flipping it around and doing bar flare and stuff. And at the very end, he pours a cocktail out. So like the theme throughout the thing is he's doing a cups and balls routine, uh, but it's not a cups and balls routine. It's it's a trick with a cocktail shaker and, and limes, right? Uh, but it essentially is like a cups and balls chop cup kind of thing. So, and then the final load being like a liquid pour where he pours the cocktail, he sticks the lemon on the on the margarita and then he hands it out for the spectator to, to go ahead and have it because it's their drink. He's a bartender, but he's doing bar magic. So that's an example of a theme running through a trick, right? Now, let's just say you wanted to do the same thing, but you wanted that theme to run through your entire show, right? You can use like little callback moments. So for example, let's just say uh, you, you did a trick earlier um, where you had someone name a baseball player and then you took off your jacket and underneath you're wearing a jersey and it has that baseball player's um, name on, on the back of the jersey. So like let's just say it says Garcia Pera on the back of, on the back of your jersey, right? So you did that trick earlier. Now you're doing a chop cup routine with little balls, right? And they look kind of like little, little cute little baseballs. And you have like a leather cup and you're doing this like kind of chop cup routine, right? And then um, the final load is a full size baseball, but you turn it around and it's an autographed baseball and it's been autographed by Nomar Garcia Pera. Callback to the routine that you did earlier. So that's an example of threading throughout the routine. For me personally, I use the invisible purse. 
So this is a routine that I do where I show the little purse and it's got no bag on it. And I pull out some like red little sponges and I do a sponge ball routine and then I put the purse away and then I go off to do some more magic. I like to call back to the purse a few times during my act. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take out the purse again and I'll be like, hey, have you guys, have I showed you my purse? And they all go, yeah, you showed us that already. Like, no, 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 not this purse, the other purse. And then I reach in and I pull out an actual purse and open it up and it's got my coins now. And so then I go into my coin stuff. And then later on in the routine, like, oh, it's really hot and it's really sweaty, right? So I reach into my pocket and I pull out the little purse again and I reach in, I pull out a hanky, wipe the sweat down, I put the handkerchief back inside the purse and then I put the purse away, right? Um, or maybe later on, um, I need a marker because I'm doing a signed card routine. So like, where's my marker? Oh, here, hold on. I got this purse. Pull out the marker, have the spectator sign the card, put the marker back in the purse, put the purse away, right? So you can call back to this prop over and over again as sort of a, a through line through your routine, exactly like what Kevin is talking about here. So there is several ways that you can do this. All you got to do is just get creative. All right, and the final question in this video, which is one that I have given the most thought to out of all of these questions, and that is Owen Staten Magic says, what is a single bit of advice that you heard that you now swear by? I racked my brain with this for a couple of days, at least, if not a little bit longer, trying to think about this and what is the one piece of advice that I swear by more than anything else that I could pass on to you guys. And I think that it is this, do what you love to do, do it for others and do it without expecting anything in return. That is something that a good friend of mine, David Bonfadini taught me. He has done so many things for me. He's passed gigs along to me. Uh, he has included me in his videos. He has shouted me out. He's done collabs with me and stuff. And <clears throat> he does it all just because he knows that, you know, he, he likes me. I'm a cool guy. And so he wants to help me out, right? So I try to do the same thing. I try to pass along as much as I can. When people reach out to me with questions, I try to answer them. I try to, you know, respond to my comments here. I try to uh, give as much as I can without asking for a whole lot back in return. And the reason for this is when you expect people to do things for you back just because you did something nice for them, oftentimes it's gonna lead to a lot of disappointment. People might not reciprocate. They might not do things back for you, you know, and you shouldn't be doing things because you specifically want people to do something back for you, right? Like I'll use this channel as an example. I put out all of these videos. I put a lot of time and a lot of effort into these videos. A lot of the people that watch my videos don't subscribe. They don't j click the join button. They don't become members. Um, they don't, you know, maybe support me financially. Maybe they don't buy my products, right? But you know what? That is okay because I know that a lot of people watch my content and even if they just got a little something out of one video that they maybe watched one time from me, I know that I did my job because my job and my goal here is to help you guys to become the best magicians that you possibly can be. And if I did that, then I did what I set out to do, right? Uh, I don't need, you know, <clears throat> people to feel obligated to me. I don't want people to feel obligated to me. Uh, I want people to follow me because they like my content, right? I want people to click the join button because they want to support me back because they appreciate my content, right? Not because they felt guilted into doing it, not because they feel like, oh, well, I'm watching this video, so now I guess I have to do that, right? Um, be nice, be kind, do what you can to help others, and, um, you know, some good things are gonna come along. Like, like I've said, I don't know, a bajillion times on this channel, Matthew Garrett, great friend of mine. I just decided to reach out to him and do something for him um, to help promote his product. And he made me a business partner and it's been a great business relationship and he's become a really good friend of mine. So, and, and I didn't expect any of that in return. All I expected was, hey, I really like your, your linking ring product. I wanna help you promote it. Um, and a lot of stuff came out of that, right? I got booked to Penguin Live Act as a result of that. Um, I got booked for some other stuff, right? Like a lot of a lot of you probably know who I am because you've seen that routine. You've seen me perform my castle act or you've seen me perform uh, the 
world's greatest uh, Chinese linking ring trick or whatever I titled that video. The best linking rings you'll ever see or whatever it was. Um, all just because I decided to help Matthew Garrett out by promoting his product. So moral of the story is do what you love to do, but do it for others because you want to give. Don't expect anything in return. And I think that is probably the best piece of golden advice that I could give you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, make sure to click the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell. That way you'll know every time I upload a new video. If you'd like to check out some more magic, visit us at obrienmagic.com and be sure to check out our online magic shop where you will find the latest and greatest magic books, downloads, and accessories.